form is exactly a clone of America. Political agenda. And this is, is it, it, there is no other political forum on Power Talk like this one. Because this one is factual. You get it right straight from the citizens themselves. When these people get on this microphone, you're talking to an American citizen, and you are listening to American citizen, and you're reading what these American citizens think as they post. It is a factual form. You can't, you cannot duplicate this because it's unduplicated. You cannot duplicate it. This is real. And this is what you hear on these microphones, how people really feel from their heart because this forum gives people the opportunity to really, really express uh, how they feel, their true thoughts, behind closed doors, in their own domain, in their own private place where they bought it or rented or whatever, in their own living room or den or wherever they may be. And you can't touch this forum. That's why it's number one, because of the reality. But people don't look at it like that. They come out here to raise hell and hate and cuss and do anything they want because it's labeled free speech. Free speech does not necessarily mean that you got to say everything that you want to say and say everything that comes to your mind because it is free speech. But people take this opportunity and this privilege to do that, to dog and attack people and beat people up because it says free speech. But really, it's not free speech. It's free speech limited. Because there are certain things that Boo Boo, the room owner, do not allow to take place in this forum out here on these airways. Because Power Talk has rules, so does he. He has to follow Power Talk's agenda. So when it comes down to politicians, some of these people in, in the Republican Party and in the Democrat Party, forget a rule. There are no rules with some of these people in, this, in politics, and you already see that. When you talk about the deficit and the, and, and the jobs that was lost, these jobs were not lost because of the president that is, that is in office now. Obama didn't cause anybody to lose their job. None of this stuff was done by this president that whole office today. None of it. This stuff that, 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 that we're dealing with now was a fallout from the last president, which was George W. Bush Jr. And Obama had nothing to do with this economy being the way it was when he came into office. America was hurting. American people was hurting. This economy was going down the drain. And people wanted a change. They wanted somebody in there to do something. And when this young man came out, people rallied around him across the board. And it wasn't just one race of people who put this man in office. It wasn't the Caucasians. It wasn't the Afro-Americans or the Puerto Ricans or anybody else. Everybody came together. It wasn't the old people or the adults. It was the young and old. Those retired and those that not retired were the ones who came out here and voted for this man. And now he's doing a good job and doing a marvelous job. And because of that, once you started getting a little relief, then your hatred, the real you, start coming out of some of these people. That's what you see here. And even in his report last night, it's factual. It's true. That man didn't get up on that TV and tell no lie. You can go check it out. But now people are not hurting as bad as they were, you know, four years ago, three years ago. The pressure's up a little bit. Eight million jobs have been recreated. And the pressure is off. So now the real stuff can come back out again. You can let your fangs out and suck the blood out of people. I'm off the mic. Yeah, what are these 8 billion jobs? I'm dying to know this. 8 billion jobs created? Uh, uh, 8 billion, you said. Uh, I'm dying to see some, some sights on that one. 8 billion? Uh, anyway, that stupid shit. I agree with him on that. 
reporter when he was asked at the end of the interview about the Watson last night. Really, says the embattled state Staten Island Republican, angry actor, and the violent threat. Well, we're going to have to get some more questions. We're going to have to get some more questions. We're going to have to get some more questions. We're going to have to get some more questions. We're going to have to get some more questions. We're going to have to get some more questions. We're going to have to get some more questions. We're going to have to get some more questions. We're going to have to get some more questions. We're going to have to get some more questions. We're going to have to get some more questions. We're going to have to get some more questions. We're going to have to get some more questions. We're going to have to get some more questions. We're going to have to get some more questions. We're going to have to get some more questions. We're going to have over at, uh, like I said, Statuary Hall, where we had our cameras last night talking to members of Congress. On a lighter note, here is what the President had to say about making it in America. Our success should depend not on accident of birth, but the strength of our work ethic and the scope of our dreams. That's what drew our forebears here. That's how the daughter of a factory worker is CEO of America's largest automaker. How the son of the barkeep is Speaker of the House. The son of a single mom can be president of the greatest nation on earth. President Obama talking about how to make it in America, noting that uh, the Speaker of the House, John Bader, Republican of Ohio, is the son of a barkeep. We'll go to Tom in Bethesda, Maryland, Republican caller. Hi, Tom. Tom. Hey, Tom, you are on the air. What are your thoughts about the State of the Union? I thought it was a terrible uh, speech. He completely uh, ignored the racial problems we have in this country. Thomas Sewell was a very uh, good black writer has said we have a race war going on here and I think he's right. Uh, we have an epidemic of black on white crime. We have these knockout uh, gangs going around hitting white people in the head trying to knock them out with one punch and our president has never said one word about that. It's about time that uh, he starts speaking out. Alan West, another black man, said that uh, Obama objectively hates white people. I agree with him on that. Uh, he said Eric Holder, the Attorney General, is a racist. We have the Black Congressional uh, Congress uh, Caucus, which refuses to, is just segregated. There's no uh, criticism of that. Okay. Uh, All right, Tom. John in Spring Lake, North Carolina, independent caller. John, what'd you make of, of last night's speech? Well, I was going to uh, comment on the president and the use of executive order. I think from a historical perspective and from a constitutional one, uh, when one looks at the Constitution, you'll find that, there, that the uh, Constitution does not give the president the ability to uh, sign executive orders. And I think um, that the president might get into trouble with uh, Republican opposition if he continues to do this. Well, John, uh, Joe Manchin, a, re a Democrat from West Virginia, talked to uh, us last night after the State of the Union address, and this is what he had to say about the president. Uh, pledging to use executive order. And I thought some of the tone that was used could have been a little bit differently. I was an executive, I was the governor of the state, and I knew the powers of the office. I knew the constitution of the state of West Virginia. I knew that I was responsible for day-to-day -day operations to run it effectively and as efficiently as I could, and I would use all the powers the office had and the constitution gave me, but I would not make it sound as if I was going to go beyond the powers or do it my way without you. I, I just, that could have been a little, that tone could have been a little bit conciliatory. Just to quote the Senator Manchin last night after the State of the Union, critical of the President for saying that he wanted to use executive power on several fronts. We're going to continue our conversation here over the last hour of today's Washington Journal. We'll end a little bit early this morning. The House is coming in for legislative session. We'll continue to get your thoughts on the State of the Union, but we will also go up to Capitol Hill where Congressman Tom Price is joining us from McCannon Rotunda. Like hell we will at the end of the video. Samuel Randrip over and out, baby.